Inventory management is no joke. Just like accounting, if you do it well, you have a bigger chance to succeed in your business. Do it bad, well, you're almost guaranteed to fail. Now, especially when it comes to inventory management with an Airtable, you have to be even more careful. So these are my top three tips for Airtable inventory management. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alex, and here on this channel, we talk anything and everything about Airtable, automation, and yeah, everything else in between. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. Tip number one, don't use Airtable for inventory management. Thank you, those were my tips. Okay, let's get serious, but no, seriously, it's not a great idea. Airtable shines in marketing applications, in project management applications, in so many different areas of the business, but inventory management, I would be looking at something else. The reason why is actually very simple. Now, just like in accounting, you have this principle of double entry accounting where credits are offset by debits, assets by liabilities. The same thing has to take place in inventory management, if you're serious about it. Let me show you an example of what I mean. So here we have a very simple Airtable database. I've got items, locations, and my ledger. If I want to do things properly, I need to do this sort of like double accounting. And here's what I mean. Let's say I order 10 toy cars. What I need to do is I need to create a transaction in my ledger table. If you don't have a ledger table, you're not doing this right. <laughs> so item, toy car, location, on the water, direction, add 10. What this means is that I've ordered 10 toy cars and I've added 10 of these items to the location on the water. If I go now to my items, I can see that on the water, essentially, you can also call this like ordered is 10, but on the water is a more industry accepted term. So 10 on the water. Let's say now I want to receive five of these into stock. I've ordered 10, but they've only sent me five. I have to jump back into my ledger and I have to create two transactions. I think you see where I'm going with this. On the water, use five and add five to in stock. Now it's balanced, right? I've got five on order, five in stock, and I have full transparency about what has happened to this particular item. I can see when it was ordered, like I ordered 10, I removed five and I added five to in stock. So that way you have a timeline of events. But I think you see how difficult it was to manage this manually. So you're a tough guy and you want to continue, even though I told you not to. Let's at least try to make the best out of the situation. So first and foremost, let's see what kind of automations we can use. And this brings us to tip number two. Use automations to help you create these two transactions. So let's now take a look at what this means from a practical standpoint. So here I have a new table that I've just created called stock transfers and the idea here is that i can tell which item i want to transfer from which location to which location let's say in stock and just like the example before i want to transfer five of these items and once i press complete transfer voila i have exactly the same result but I didn't go in and try to mess with the ledger myself. The result is exactly the same, you know, five on the water, five in stock, and it's just much more straightforward. Now, in terms of the automation itself, as you can see, it's actually quite straightforward. When a record matches conditions, stock transfer is complete. I have two actions that take place. If my from location is not empty, I create the two transactions. One is for use and the other one is for ads but if the from location is empty we just create an add to the to location simple as that so tip number three is yet another quality of life improvement and in this case it has to deal with access and what do i mean by that is that generally speaking using Airtable's grid view so to speak 
can become problematic when you're tracking stock because anybody can just jump in and edit literally anything. They can make a ton of changes to the ledger, for instance, and it will be too late to kind of recover them and, and see what's what. So yeah, you're kind of like walking on thin ice. Now, to minimize this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce an interface to kind of mitigate some of that problem. I've created one right here, very straightforward. Let me just showcase this. I'm going to press done and you'll see how this works. So right now we have that same old toy car, 10 on order. I'm going to open up that record and I'm going to create a new stock transfer. Now, I also have that ledger entry, but I can't edit it. I'm clicking around and I still can't edit anything. So all I have to do is just jump into items or jump into stock transfers and create a new stock transfer. Let's go ahead and do that. First, I have to pick an item. So you see, you have control over a bit of that process and shortly you'll see what I mean by a bit. So I'm gonna choose toy car from location. So I have to choose the location where I'm bringing it from. And here I have to know that on the water actually contains 10 and you can probably do this somehow but right now in the form i don't think i can bring in lookup fields or anything that can help me understand how much there is in that location so i could be choosing the wrong location and it's tough to limit the choices here dynamically but anyway from location on the water to location you see i still have on the water Technically, I should be able to remove that on the water location because I'm already using it up here. Not really doable in Airtable's interfaces as far as I know. You can do this in NoLoco, which is a comforting thought. But at the same time, if you're just using Airtable, it can become problematic. So let's just say I'm going into in stock. How much do I want to transfer? I want to transfer five. As soon as I punched in five, I can now complete that transfer and press create, that will now add five to in stock. Now I can do this even from the view of the toy. So let's create another stock transfer, toy car. It's nice because it's pre-filled for us from on the water to in stock. Let's say I want to transfer three, complete transfer and see what happens to my numbers over here at the top two on the water, eight in stock. So this is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little top three tips for stock management. Let me know down in the comments below if you want me to do like a more in-depth tutorial as to how to set this up. I've touched on a few things, but it's by no means complete to call this a tutorial. It's just my thoughts on stock management in Airtable. And as you can probably tell, I'm not a huge fan. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks.